Well, hi everyone, my name is Ash Carlson and over the next half hour, we're gonna be talking about The Mandalorian season two, unanswered questions from season one, predictions and all of those pesky rumored castings and cameos and all of that. And I think I've assembled a pretty great team to chat with. So we have joining me today, entertainment reporter and assistant producer for Looking for Leia, Katrina Dennis. Thank you, thanks for having me, Ash. We have entertainment reporter for io9 and Gizmodo, Jermaine Lucier. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Ash. And film writer for Vanity Fair, Anthony Brestigan. Hey, guys. You know this is no place for a child. Wherever I go, he goes. So I've heard. So how's everyone feeling about season two? Is the hype there for you yet, guys? How you feeling, Jermaine? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it's as we were recording this, it's about two weeks away. And I, I'm excited for it because I know it's coming. But I also don't feel like the hype for it because, and it's not even just quarantine. It's just I see the same, I saw one TV commercial. We've had one trailer. It's got about seven shots in it. And Lucasfilm is obviously very secretive about these kind of things, but... It doesn't feel like it's two weeks away. It feels like it's two months away and we're just about to start, not see the whole thing in two weeks. As a Star Wars fan, I'm always excited. As a Pedro Pascal fan, I'm extremely excited. As a fan of Yodito, I am super excited, but otherwise I'm kind of like, well, I, I feel like I'm gonna be more excited when I actually know what's happening and going on. And yeah, so once I'm in it, I feel like it's gonna be there. I'm right with you guys. I, I'm excited to have this to watch, but there's nothing to be excited about yet. I thought the trailer was relatively bland. It felt like, I mean, it was cool seeing the Gamorrean guard wrestlers or boxers or whatever they are, or gladiators. Uh, apart from that, it all felt like it could be like scenes from season one. And I know that the John Favreau wants to keep it locked down, um, but there's not much to be hyped about just yet. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for those things that will make it exciting. Of course, we'll all tune in and see then. And I feel like even last season, it was like a last minute thing where they were like, oh, maybe we should like pull back the curtain on this just a little bit and build some hype. But it wasn't until like right before that that started happening. Well, but at least you had new things like, oh, we see the Mandalorian for the first time like mm -hmm. in April back at Star Wars Celebration. And yeah. we didn't know anything about Baby Yoda, but like you saw scenes and you heard music and there were things that felt fresh and new. I just, I, I don't, I don't feel, I feel like it's just sort of like, you know, something is coming, but you don't know what it is. So it's just hard to feel like a lot of excitement. I guess I'll, I'll tune in to watch. It's almost like the, that was the appetizer last time because we had a Rise of Skywalker coming a month later. And I was like, oh, we get these two big things. Now Mandalorian has to carry all of it because we're not going to get a Star Wars movie till 2022, 2023, who knows? So I feel like it's holding more weight. There hasn't been that wow moment yet. It Not strangely yet. feels like my heart is still in season one because I had that big juicy promotional sandwich of like celebration and then the series. And then after that, we had the making of uh, series as well. Yeah. So, and that was just like so cool. And if I even, if I had gotten a little more BTS, I think by now, I, I'd probably be a lot more interested. So just looking back at season one, what would you guys say, Katrina, what's your biggest unanswered question from season one that you hope is addressed in season two? We're gonna we're gonna discuss this later, I'm sure. But uh, Fennec Shand is a big, big thing uh, for my heart, and uh, whoever was approaching her, that's just kind of stuck with me since episode five. So I'm really, really interested in that, where that's going. I'm with you. So Ming Na Wen, everyone was really disappointed for her to come in and out in an episode. And you know that thing where it's like, you don't see a body, they're probably not dead. But in Star Wars, it's like, you can see the body. You can see them get chopped in half. That does not mean they are dead. So mm -hmm. I'm holding out that she is still alive. I think she probably is still alive. I just, they didn't put those boots in there for nothing. You know, yeah. like they, they seeded that for a big reason. You know, who or what that is, we don't know, but you don't end an episode like that, going up to a character like that. And, and, and don't forget, that also is the episode where they go to Tatooine and it's just filled with the nostalgia, like on overload, like almost too much. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if, so I, th I think she'll fit back in, but I mean, you also never know. Yeah, I really want to see her come back. She was one of my favorite characters from season one. Uh, yeah, if you get Ming-Na Wen, 
to do something, you better let her run with it a little more. I want to know more about that character. I want to see her do more badass stuff. In some ways, she fell a little bit victim to the Boba Fett trap <laughs> uh, because she's this cool looking character who has a neat backstory, but not, we don't actually get to see her do anything super cool. Like she gets kind of captured and killed right away. Uh, mm -hmm. And those boots, I mean, we do, we do know what that is. That's Boba Fett's uniform at the very mm -hmm. least. The, that jingle jangle of his spurs is the same exact sound that Boba Fett had in Empire Strikes Back. So you don't do that by accident either. Whether it's Boba Fett in those boots, we will find out, but it's clearly meant to imply some connection to Boba Fett. Imply, yeah. but I mean, we did see that guy go down, uh, you know, the Sarlacc pit where he's supposed to be digested for a thousand years. Star Wars has been resurrecting Boba Fett ever since he went into that pit. You know, mm -hmm. there's short stories about him escaping. You know, the uh, the novels by Chuck Wendig created this whole other character who finds the armor mm -hmm. and puts it on, protects his town. So like, you could weave that character in. I think that would be a little bit disappointing. Like maybe it'd be. It'll be cool for Chuck Wendy to see his character <laughs> on the screen, but like, I wanted, I want, I would like to see Boba Fett come back. You know, I've, I feel like I would like to see Boba Fett, but you know, like you said, they had done, they had done a lot of short stories. They've revived him a million times. When they revive him in canon, as people refer to it, I feel like it needs to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's the thing that a lot of fans have been waiting for. So not only does it need to be a big deal, it needs to be really well written. So yeah. I don't know if I feel like that's Boba Fett. With all the rumors that we're going to get into a little bit, that's kind of feels like the danger with season two, right? Like, is we hear that maybe Tamora Morrison is back as Boba Fett. We hear maybe Rosario Dawson's playing Sokotano and all these major characters. And you're like, you're going to fit all this into eight episodes? Those characters are all so massive to fans. And like we already, what was great about season one is it was a pretty streamlined kind of show about this bounty hunter and his child. And the child has a whole other thing that's really fascinating, but that was it, you know? So I, I'm, that's one of the dangers I think they might fall into here. We'll have to see. It, the original season felt very much like the serials that inspired Star Wars in the first place, where it's less like a TV series. I mean, there's a connecting thread but it's like, they're so idiosyncratic. Each episode is, is its own little self-contained story that it felt like you're following the Mandalorian as he has various adventures rather than one connected story where the, all of the characters mingle and interact. I also think one danger of the, um, the under wraps hype that they're trying to generate by not showing anything, not talking about anything, uh, and just waiting for it to drop is that you, you end up letting the fan imaginations run wild mm -hmm. and star wars has fallen into this again and again and again absolutely where you get so hyped about the return of emperor palpatine that you that nothing they present can match what your imagination has done and i think that's a danger for creatives is letting the fans write their own story in advance and then you can't help but underwhelm them so i think they should manage that a little bit better the second that one of these Hollywood trades breaks a casting thing, they should say no if it's not, you know? And if they, and so, cause like if, if Soka Tano is in this, it would be cool to know and just get kind of get excited about it. But the uncertainty, yeah, you build like, oh my God, is it going to be all about her? Are we going to tie into Rebels? Is Sabine going to be in it? Are we going to see Ezra? Are we going to see Thrawn? And then you just, your mind just keeps going when really if she's in there, maybe she pops up and the end of season episode eight and says like, I can help you with that baby. And it's like credits, you know, like that yeah. might be all it is. That's a bummer. Uh, you know, I thought uh, Ryan Johnson did a really smart thing when uh, The Last Jedi was coming out. In an interview with him, I said, look, people want to know, is Lando Calrissian coming back? We brought back so many of the other classic characters. You're going to a casino world. It seems like Lando's natural habitat. Uh, any chance we'll see Billy D. Williams? And he goes, absolutely not. I want to go on the record with this now. Like, Lando is not in this. I don't want fans to expect him and then be disappointed when they don't get it. And I think, look, I don't expect them to come out and say, yes, Ahsoka Tano is in this show. Yes, we're going to reveal uh, uh, this character or that character. Like, if you have certain surprises built in, fine. I thought the Baby Yoda reveal worked really well. But if you're going to say nothing and fans are going to get hyped for these characters and expect them to be major parts of the show. And if they're not, that's a bummer. And you've got to, then you have to live with the disappointment of that. Do you guys think that Rosaria Dawson is 
in fact playing Ahsoka in the show. I think she is. I think she is. I think so. Yeah, that's a good, good casting. It's the casting I, that that like Star Wars fans asked for like ten years ago. I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> like or even five. I did an interview with her last like a year ago, and I was like, "Are you ever going to be in Star Wars?" And she was like, "Oh, the fans have been pushing for me to play Ahsoka Tana for a while now." And I was like, "Why are you saying that randomly?" And then like, <laughs> like six months later, I asked her again, and she was like. I can't confirm or deny anything. <laughs> it's fine to do that. It's just, if she's in it for two seconds, as Jermaine says. Yeah. Great yeah. job hyping it up. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's, she's the dark saber of this season. Like I said, that's, that's my, that's my bold prediction. That Ahsoka Tano is the, uh, is the tease of, of the, what's to come next season. Mm. I think. I think that's probably accurate. Anthony, do you have a biggest unanswered question from season one? Biggest unanswered question. I'd like to know where baby Yoda comes from. Did you call him y Yodito? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the Latinx branch of the fandom has, yeah, like, like, mildly that. adopted Yodito him. That was good. That was, that's mine, too. I mean, mm -hmm. th that was such a big reveal for so many reasons, and it's become, you know, a very cute thing. But from a pure Star Wars mythology, the fact that there is a third part member of Yoda's race out there that's strong with the Force at this time, after Yoda's dead, has such implications for what could be happening and not the, not the next two episode seasons of The Mandalorian, but the next two d decades of Star Wars. The promise there is so big. Filoni knows it, Favreau knows it, and I think they're going to play it close and tight. Where did he come from? Wh wh who are his parents? What is his powers? What is his destiny? All of it. I have so many questions about Moff Gideon because I was just rewatching the finale and I don't think it struck me at first. Moff Gideon, he committed war crimes. Like, he's not alive. And I'm like, who is this dude? Like, what's his whole backstory? He pillaged an entire, uh, you know, race of people and stole their most powerful relic. How did that happen? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Like, what what happened between Rebels and now to have him possess the Darksaber? Or is it even the original Darksaber? Like, you know pretty hard to forge, but you know, everything can be copied. Oh. But do you remember in um, in uh, Rogue One, when they go up to get the, uh, whatever, the document file on the, mm -hmm. on the Death Star, they uh, um, they see all those files and isn't the dark saber like listed as one of the like secret projects that the Empire was involved with? Mm -hmm. I think oh, so. I I, yeah, I think it's the real dark saber. We saw Sabine give it to Bo-Katan and then now he's got it, so. But again, that leads to another room. So Jermaine, what is your biggest hope for season two? I think this is, it might be my like uh, my fan hat. I'd like to see it become more of Dave Filoni show. And the, the casting sort of is suggesting that, meaning we're seeing these Clone Wars characters maybe coming in. We're seeing these Rebels characters maybe coming in. We're seeing all these stories that Filoni's been seeding since 2008, nine, whenever he started getting on Clone Wars. You know, the Darksaber being the first big thing of that. And I think, short of George Lucas, Filoni is the god of Star Wars. So, uh, and I think Favreau kind of realizes that. And I think he's kind of maybe be like, giving him a little bit more rope with the story. And that's that's my hope, is that we're gonna see it get uh, a little deeper into the lore, and because that's my favorite stuff. But on the other hand, you know, it's a show for mass audiences. It's not a book for Star Wars fans. So I think they have a, a, a really fine line to tell. Anthony, what's your biggest hope for season two? Uh, my biggest hope for season two is that we get a reason to keep watching for season three. Like, I, I think if it's just on the run for seven seasons, <laughs> that that's going to get tired. It's like the A-team, right? Like, they're just on the run constantly. Uh -huh. uh, and I feel like if they treat this as a trilogy, say, three seasons, this is chapter two. Can you do an Empire Strikes Back thing with it where you get a sense of, uh, you know, the stakes are raised, right? That's what you do in act two is you, act one establishes uh, the characters and the situation and then act two like puts them in peril and, and raises uh, all, all the challenges around them. So like, I hope that it doesn't end the same way that season one ended with just uh, the Mandalorian and, and the child on, on the run. Katrina, how about you? I am holding out hope for more Mandalorians. Uh, I'm I'm worried about what happened to them because um, so many of them were dead, if not almost all. I, I'm, I'm really interested in what Din and his relation to his culture is now that he's watched like that massacre. He's gone through that like 
Assage Ventress moment where like all of his people are dead and, and now he has to move forward. So I'm really focused on, along with Baby Yoda, uh, Din. I, I really care about him, so. I also wouldn't mind seeing some of the unresolved questions from the sequel trilogy perhaps be resolved here. You know, bounty hunters could also recover objects and if we get some sort of explanation about the lightsaber, how it ended up going from Cloud City to, you know, uh, Matt Kanata's lair, mm -hmm. that'd be kind of neat. But I don't necessarily need that. Yeah, we never found that out, did we? <laughs> no. There was, more, there was a little bit more in some of the comics. Um, I don't remember specifically what happened, but yeah, not, not, we don't have a whole perfect, there's still some gaps there for sure. Okay, let's get into all the rumors, all the casting rumors. So, number one, we saw Sasha Banks in the trailer. Mm -hmm. And the internet immediately blew up with the fact that she is Sabine Wren. Katrina, I see you shaking your head. What do you think? Sabine Wren is an Asian woman, uh, first and foremost, specifically because creators in Rebels, even Dave agreed with that fact. So I feel like it wouldn't make sense for him to cast Sasha. Um, but I'm very excited uh, on that note to see Sasha Banks in this series because I'm a huge fan of hers and I think she's going to bring something really interesting. I hope she's evil. Also, if you were going to cast Sabine Wren, wouldn't you cast uh, Tia Sirkar? Like, yeah. she looks like Sabine Wren. She voices exactly. Sabine Wren. Like, but they didn't cast Ashley Eckstein as so I know. Of, hypothetically. I think Sasha Banks, from what I've heard, maybe is some kind of ma other Mandalorian. Is, um, mm -hmm. Good or evil, I'm not sure. Not Sabine. Sabine, obviously, also um, is that. But but the thing is, like, I don't know why Sabine would be there, but I also don't know why Ahsoka would be there. And at this point in the story, they might be together as per the end of Rebels. They go up together at the end of, after the battle of, uh, you know, Endor. It, it could make sense if that piece of casting is true, but yeah, I don't think Sasha Banks is there. We kind of touched on this, but Boba Fett is a big rumor. Do we think Boba Fett is alive? Where are I'm we sure at? Boba Fett is alive somewhere, um, but I'm sticking, I am sticking to the guns of those, those spurs belonging to Cobb Vanth, who has his armor right around that time. So yeah, I, I, I'm trying to parse the time between Aftermath and when those, uh, when the Mandalorian occurs and it's around that time that he is sheriff of uh, Freetown and um, I also would just really like it to be Cobb Vanth because, because Cobb hired uh, Malakili, the Rancor Tamer, to herd uh, his flock in town. So it would just be nice to see that. <laughs> that's, that's what I want. This is a super random, but I live in Van Nuys and I saw Tamora Morrison about a year ago running around like, and maybe he's just getting in shape and just being healthy. So and I didn't even think about it when I saw him. I was just like, oh my God, cool. And then like eight months later, I was like, whoa, wait, was he at that time maybe getting back into Star Wars shape? Because if he's back, he's obviously, you know, Boba Fett is actually a clone of Jango Fett. And so he could be playing Rex, who is, we you know, still alive at that time. Uh, again, which would bring in the Filoni stuff. I, I just feel like all these rumors that we keep hearing are probably true. Otherwise somebody would have come out and said no, but I don't know. You also got to think, Star Wars films and TV shows do not geek out like the books and comics do. Yeah. They keep it very much on the surface. They never go as deep as the fans like to speculate. They, don't, they, didn't, they just didn't even explain how Emperor Palpatine came back, right? Mm. But, I, but I think if, 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 if Timothy Oliphant is playing Cobb as everybody suspects, you don't need the full backstory. I mean, I think he, he's a easy enough to understand surface character within a story that you could probably be like, Oh, he just stole some armor. Now he's trying to use it for good, but sure. now he's going to yeah. get, you know, his butt kicked. You know, like that, that could be it. I'd like to see him come face to face with Boba Fett. Yes. He's like I'd like my armor. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I want. I think, I think that might, yeah, that, that seems like where it could be going and that would be super duper cool. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be cool. So another rumor that came out, I think it's a more recent one is Katie Sackhoff is Bo-Katan. What oh. do we think? Yeah. That's another, like, using the person to play the character, so. Yeah. And also, like we said, we had already said, she's the last person to have the Darksaber, and the Darksaber is, you know, obviously going to be a huge part of the show. Uh, it would make sense that she was on the lookout for it, has beef with Moff Gideon, et cetera, et cetera. I want to go into the trailer. So uh, what did you guys get from the trailer? Is there anything that you predict from watching it? I know uh, there was, we had, like, brought up, uh, in, in preparation for this, like where Mando's taking ba Baby Yoda. Um, I would just like to say, I hope 
that I don't think Skywalker Academy is open yet, but I sure hope he's not taking him there. I, I'm really leaning toward the returning him to his people or Ahsoka and the gang show up and, and have him at the end of the series. So in, I have a question. In the timeline, where is the general public with like the Jedi? They don't know they exist at this point? Yeah, I, I, I think that's an interesting thing about Star Wars is like, while we see the movies and we see what happens with the Jedi and stuff, the Mandalorian season one is a great example of like, not everyone knows about this stuff. The Mandalorian didn't even know, he'd never even heard of like the force of the Jedi, you know? And he grew up as like a great warrior. There's so much else going on. So who, what the galaxy knows about the Jedi, who knows? I mean, it only took 19 years for people to completely forget or almost completely forget who the Jedi were and, or just think that they were awful, so. Do you guys think we're gonna get another Baby Yoda-esque moment? Will we ever stop saying Baby Yoda? <laughs> Wait till we get to Team Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said it, that he has like a 90 name. of them. <laughs> I think he's got a name, but I think like the child, I don't think we'd ever use it. Unless it's like a real strong name, you know, I don't know. Even like Yaddle is a better name than Baby Yoda. You what? Know? I'm yeah. never gonna stop. Yaddle, I think, kind of disrupts the whole thing. Totally. I think Yaddle is a lame character. You put this toupee on a Yoda and stick it in the background and say it's a Lady Yoda, like. <laughs> I, I would I would bet anything that if they could go back, Dave Filoni would be like, George, you don't know me yet, but don't put that character in there, please. <laughs> but it just, just, it's gonna ruin storytelling way down the road, and I think, the fact that there was this other Jedi of that race is weird. Yeah. And like, do they all have why Yoda, Yaddle? Like, come on, that's lame. Yaddle Twitter's gonna come for you after those. <laughs> 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 I think all the Yaddle Rose out there. <laughs> <laughs> Yaddle Rose. I think it's a big reveal. It's gonna be in regard to one of these casting rumors we discussed. Boba yeah. Fett would be much bigger, be huge. It'd be bigger than Soka as, as much as her fans are. So I don't want to start anything. Uh -oh. No, do I it. I don't want anybody to go, oh, he knows something. I don't know anything about this. But has time travel ever been an element of Star Wars? Like, could that potentially be Baby Yoda? And then they got to get him back to the future somehow? <laughs> well, sort of. There I feel was like... the world between worlds. It was more like moment travel with the bridge. Yeah, yeah, so. Katrina's right. There's an yeah, episode of Rebels where like you can sort of jump between places, uh, times and stuff. So hypothetically, maybe. I, I kind of like that idea, Anthony. Like because better than it being like, oh, we cloned Yoda, or this is Yoda and Yaddle's love baby. <laughs> or there's a whole planet of these, of these beings who aren't helping with anything, you know? That's always yeah. a big thing, you know? Like, They're not helping. <laughs> Yoda's coolness derives from being unique. That's why Yaddle ruins it in some ways. And it's cool that there's a baby Yoda and that, but, but if there weren't another Yoda critter, we would be way more into like, where did this thing come from? So I don't know. I just made me wonder like, is there going to be, so, oh, you know, we use the force to time, like time travel will become a new force power or something. I, I hadn't heard that theory, but I like it a lot. Time travel though, it totally screws up every narrative. Like, yeah. because then you could just keep going back and changing things and fix it. Like it's tough, to, it's tough to pull off. Yeah, I agree. Does anyone have any bold predictions for season two? Jermaine, you kind of touched on yours. I think if we know from the end of the last season and a little bit in the trailer that Din is out trying to bring the child to people who know what his power is. And I think of the people who we know are in the galaxy at that moment, Ahsoka Tano knows more about the Force than anybody. So I think it would be super duper cool. And I said that like twice in the Zoom and I feel terrible about it. Um, that, uh, that it sort of ends with he finds this Jedi named Ahsoka and she's like, I will help you roll credits, wait a year for season three. I mean, I th that's kind of my bold prediction. I'd like to see Mark Hamill turn up in the show. You know, I'd like to see Luke after the fall of Endor. This is what, what is it like four or five years after? Uh, yeah, yeah, five years. You know, it'd be like six at this point. He wouldn't be, uh, he wouldn't be necessarily having Kylo Ren as a sidekick at this point. He could just be sort of like a freelance, <laughs> Jedi roaming around trying to figure out what's next, you know, and if we're gonna like, we're gonna unite you with Yoda. If he turns up at the end of season two, how cool would that be? I think bo Katan is gonna come back and fight Moff Gideon. That's my bold prediction. I just wanna see a cool sword fight. I love that. Yeah, I wanna see that Darksaber in, in live action, you know? Yes! Oh God, it'd be so cool. 
I want to see it in toy action. It'll be really nice on my shelves. I just need a nice dark saber. Yeah, you got a lot going on back there. You can just add that right to the top. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one, though. Come on. (laughs) Yeah. We all got it. Uh, (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time and joining me. And um, just to sign off, let us know where we can find you guys, Jermaine. Uh, You can find my writing on uh, io9.com, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at at Jermaine Lucier. You can find me anywhere on the internet if you look for Ocatrina. That's O-H-C-A-T-R-I-N-A. And I am writing at VanityFair.com and in the magazine. And you can find me right here on ET Online or ET Live or wherever you're watching this. And I'm at Ash Carlson, and I'll see you guys next time. Work. Good to see you. Take care.